My entitled stepmother demands to walk me down the aisle on my wedding day. Despite the fact that I've never been close to her growing up, and she actively tried to replace my mom after my real mother passed away when I was nine years old. And now, after I told her no, both my dad and my stepmother are refusing to show up to my wedding unless she can walk me down the aisle. Here's what happened. So my mom passed away when I was just nine years old, and my stepmom, by the name of Sarah, married my dad when I was 11. I guess she hoped that we would one day be super close, and I would call her mom, but it's never happened. Sarah has always seemed fairly pushy. She would try to do things with me that I used to do with my mom, and it always ended poorly. Sarah would try to get me to not visit my mom's family because she thought it was taking away from family time. I understand Sarah wants to be close, but she kept on trying to replace my mom, and it never worked. Me and Sarah aren't close at all today. When I turned 18, I moved in with my girlfriend, who is now my fiance. I don't really call or stop by the house to see my dad and Sarah. In fact, Sarah was the last person I told I got engaged. Recently, she posted on social media that her boy was going to get married and how excited she was to be the mother of the groom and walk her son down the aisle. My dad wouldn't be able to do it because my dad is disabled. When I asked her about the post, she said that she thought she would be walking me down the aisle because my fiance was going to be walking as well. I told told her that I was going to be walking with my fiance. She said that this was fine, but she was also really excited for the mother-son dance. I told her as well that there wasn't going to be one. She asked me why and I straight up told her that the mother of the groom isn't going to be a role at the wedding since my mother is no longer living. This then caused her to break down crying and she asked me why I hated her. I told her that I didn't hate her, but she kept accusing me of it because apparently to her I've always treated her like garbage garbage, when all she's ever wanted to be was a mother figure in my life. At this point, I got angry and said that she could never be my mom. And you know what? I kind of feel bad about saying that. She then offered to pay for the wedding if that was the issue, but I still said no. Now, she and my dad are upset and are currently saying that they won't be attending the wedding unless Sarah walks me down the aisle. My dad told me that Sarah stepped up to be a mom when mine was gone, and she's been a great mom and brought so much love to my life, yet I always rejected her. Can anyone give me any advice on what to do? Because I honestly feel very stuck. There is definitely two sides of this coin in my opinion. On one hand, I think it was very presumptuous of Sarah to assume that she would be walking you down the aisle. I mean if the past lifetime for you didn't clue her in that you and her were really not that close to begin with, then I don't know what will. So she is completely out of line for assuming even in the slightest that she would be involved in that way. That's just incredibly rude. But on that same note, it really does not sound like you've ever given this lady a chance. Like, it sounds like she really just tried her best to try and be kind and loving towards you. And maybe later down the line you can try and see that, but it honestly seems like you're being very insensitive towards Sarah. But, in that same context, the fact that they're saying, oh, we're not going to show up to your wedding unless Sarah can walk you down the aisle is absolutely ridiculous. That is honestly the most entitled thing out of all of this. So I think considering all that's going on, I think you're definitely in the right here. Sure, both of you probably could have been a lot better growing up. It sounds like she definitely could have been a much better stepmother and she could have done a better job of respecting your boundaries and understanding that she will never be your mother and you also probably could have been kinder to her and given her some kind of chance in the past. But with the way they're acting right now, I don't blame you for approaching her and saying, hey, you're not walking me down the aisle. Obviously, in the context of this story, I'm sure there is a lifetime of examples you could share that would say, um, nope, she's really at fault here. And I totally believe you on that end. But I think with whatever you decide to do for your wedding, just make sure it's what you want to do. And if it means your dad and your stepmom aren't going to show up, then honestly, that's probably for the best. Because they really do sound like they're very entitled. And that's not fair for you in the slightest. Especially on your wedding day. My entitled parents never believe me when I tell them that my little brother is abusing me and being so terrible to me when they are not in the room. And despite all the mounting evidence, they still won't believe me no matter what, and I've honestly just had enough. So for some context, my little brother is an absolute nightmare. He has always been very unkind to me, and it's always been the case where my parents side with him a lot quicker than they'll ever side with me. So to start out, this particular situation started last week, and I had no idea my little brother was trying to continue this torment until earlier tonight. I'll start with what happened then. A few nights ago, I was enjoying dinner with my family before my brother swung his leg into me and kicked me in 
the leg. My parents didn't even react and expected me to just deal with it and move on. A few days later, I had just finished vacuuming the house. I sat down on my bed and relaxed, but was then disrupted by the sound of a vacuum again. I walked outside and I saw my brother vacuuming the places I checked thoroughly. I told him we didn't need to vacuum there, and as soon as I walked near him, he dropped the vacuum and he punched me. According to my parents, though, that was my fault, and I was supposed to just move on. Yesterday, I came home from work after a long and tiring day, and my parents needed to go out for the night. I had no idea about this, and they sprung it on me out of nowhere. They expected me to know, and were rather irritated that I didn't, even though they didn't explain anything. They ordered me to make dinner immediately. Luckily, there was some leftovers in the fridge that I could heat up. I went to the kitchen, and I began heating up the leftover chicken. Once it had been heated up, I split up the container into two parts using a fork. I filled one bowl for me and another bowl for my little brother. I kept the remaining chicken in the container for somebody else if they wanted to eat it for lunch or dinner. My little brother then walked into the kitchen and snatched the container and the fork away from me and dumped the rest into his bowl. I kindly asked him to give the fork back and told him that I was saving the rest of the chicken for someone else that might be hungry. But as I should have known, that was met by yells and verbal assault. I quickly apologized for making dinner for him, and then he started yelling horrible things at me. In his words, or what I can remember at least, he said to me, You're the worst big brother. You failed at being a brother, and you're just so overprotective. I hate you, and I'm sorry that mom and dad have to deal with you. These words deeply hurt me, and I decided to retreat to another room for some alone time. As I sat there, I could still hear him yelling obscenities at me, and at this point, I started crying. I then noticed a dusting brush that had been broken in half and threw it into the ground in sheer anger. I know I should not have done that, as that was rather immature, but I couldn't think of expressing my rage and sorrow in any other way. He saw this and walked into the room I was in. He picked it up and he threw it at me. It nearly hit my head, and I threw up my arms to defend myself. I then get up from where I was sitting, and he ran away instantly. This isn't the first time he's thrown things at me either. He once threw a pen that almost hit me in the eye. I was almost finished with my dinner and I thought that this was the end of it, but I was mistaken. He walked into the room while I wasn't paying attention and jammed the fork he was using into my arm. And as I was trying to defend myself, he ran off again, but I couldn't bring myself to chase after him. I finished eating my dinner and I cried to myself in my room. I felt alone and unsafe. Then I heard the sound of the garage door opening and my parents returning from their party. I tried to explain what happened as I couldn't handle this myself. I tried talking it out with my little brother, but that didn't work either. Their response was the usual. You need to deal with it yourself. I tried to explain again that I needed help, but they instructed me to work it out with him, and it wasn't their problem. Eventually, I went back to my room incredibly annoyed. Now this afternoon, I had just come home from another long day at work, and I'm finally getting a break. I have finished all my work and need to wait for a special celebration next year in January, which is when I'll be returning there. I sat down, put everything away, and began watching some anime while playing a game on my Switch. I had already told my dad about my good news, so I was just waiting for my mom to get home so I could tell her as well. She eventually did come home, and I walked up to her room to tell her about my good news. I waited in the doorway and waited for her to get ready and put her stuff away before I could talk to her. As I stood there, I heard my little brother come up behind me, and he said the words, Hey mom! in a welcoming voice, but then that voice turned into an aggravated tone for absolutely no reason. I remember him saying the words, Oh my God, before stomping away. I tried asking him what was wrong later, but he told me to just get lost. I told my mom and she was very happy for me as well. I thought my life was about to turn in the right direction, but I was wrong again. Later, when we were having dinner, my little brother decided to speak about last night and how awful I was to him. They believed all his lies and I tried to explain what happened happened. Apparently, I kicked him first during that time that he kicked me, and I turned off the vacuum so he punched me. They believed this and berated me for acting like his parent and babysitter, even though that is exactly what they told me to do. I tried to talk to them about how they were wrong about all of this and tell them what exactly happened, as well as free myself from my brother's lies, but I was cut off again for apparently being disrespectful. My mother then started screaming and berating me about how her life was so hard and she wants us to pretend to get along and be 
happy with each other, and she was basically just using me as her emotional punching bag yet again. I was resisting the urge to cry, knowing that it would only make things worse, because they would just yell at me for crying. My brother then brought up the fact that I said that my parents are using me as a scapegoat and a mental punching bag. I've never said that to him. He may have heard me muttering that at some point, but this only caused more yelling, and I felt incredibly stressed out. I tried to leave the table multiple times, but I was dragged back there verbally, even though I wanted to say no. I was forced to listen to how my little brother doesn't have any more compassion for me left, since I'm such a bad older brother. My parents tried to have us finish up with things we enjoy, so they could escape to watch their scripted live action shows. Eventually, and after I left the table, I sat in my room and I cried. I felt awful. I was forced to listen to more lies and verbal abuse from my family, all because of one simple fact. I had the audacity to make dinner for my little brother, and I'm honestly just so sick of the lies. This is an awful living situation. Like all things considered, your parents absolutely suck. The fact that they believe your little brother no matter what is deeply disturbing. I mean, if they had any sense about them, eventually, after all these moments of accusations against this spoiled, rotten little brother, they would eventually say, hey, maybe there's some kind of truth here. In my opinion, if you ever do have to babysit this spoiled, rotten brat again, I would start recording every interaction you have with him. Pull out your phone and record it on video. That way you can have visual proof that this kid is absolutely harassing you. It's unacceptable, and the way you're being treated is absolutely unfair, and it's borderline abuse. And hopefully you're able to get out of that living situation, because being treated like this on a daily basis is only going to make you more unhappy. And hopefully you can find some kind of solution. An entitled Karen freaks out because her dog accidentally ate her poop. And after I secure an appointment for this dog to see one of our vets, this entitled Karen freaks out and turns into an absolute monster. And I honestly could not be more in shock. Okay, so for this story, grab a chair and a hot drink and buckle up because this one is a roller coaster ride. I used to work reception at a vet clinic in a very entitled customer prone area. As you might imagine, that gave me customer service horror stories to fill an entire epic saga and then some. I loved my job and I loved my patients. They were all the best boys and girls in the world, no exceptions. And I loved most of my clients who were genuinely nice and gentle and polite as well as thankful for our hard work. But the bad ones really made it not worth the time. The bad experiences tend to be the ones that stick with us the most when working with the public because of how wildly and unexpectedly our expectations of human behavior get flipped every day. You always think it can't get any more unbelievably absurd and you are always proven wrong. I come to you bearing one of those stories as tribute. A tiny treat, if you will. We need to suffer together and we're all here for the hot tea and the sweet, sweet catharsis. One day, I was minding my own business at the reception desk when the phone rang and I picked it up as usual, greeting the caller as I always do. A voice shrieked from the other side. No greeting, no introduction, nothing. Just a singular phrase, my dog ate my poop. I was silent for a few seconds, trying to process if I had heard correctly, since we hear a lot of weird things in emergency clinics. But this was honestly new to me. I said, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Trying to clarify what she said. My dog ate my poop. Her voice was shaking and she was barely trying to contain a scream. This time, I couldn't contain myself. The words immediately flew out of my mouth and I said, how on earth did that happen? Then the poor woman explains that she had left some stool samples on the sink and when she wasn't looking, the dog just went there and decided they were an appropriate snack. I pulled up her file and the dog is a fluffy, adorable, tiny lap dog who had the words care written all over his file with very stern warnings from previous vets, meaning that he was a very spicy boy and he would bite. The owner was extremely nervous with this ordeal and since I had never faced a similar situation, I asked her to be put on hold while I asked the vet what we should do in this situation. The vet was typing something on the computer when I got to her and I tried my best to explain the situation. I look at them and I say, uh, so we've got a client on the phone who is freaking out because her dog ate her poop. What should we do in this situation? The vet didn't take her eyes off the screen, completely unfazed. They said, ah, uh, that's nothing to worry about. It happens all the time. So I further clarified, no, I don't think you're getting it. The dog ate the owner's poo. The vet suddenly stopped for a moment. A few seconds later, she repeated the exact same words I had said over the phone. How did that happen? I did my best to explain, and while she was flabbergasted, it's one of those things that can and did happen, and in her opinion, it would probably be fine, maybe a rough tummy for a couple of 
of days. But if for peace of mind, the owner wanted to come by, I could still offer her an appointment. I came back on the phone, gently reassuring the poor woman who was in a state that it should be fine, probably nothing to worry about, but I still offered her the appointment just to be sure, which she took for later that afternoon. I really took my time with her and managed to reassure her and calm her down. The moment that I sensed relief and gratefulness in her voice was the moment that out of nowhere she completely flipped. A new person emerged and started screaming nonstop at me because apparently we had messed up her dog's flea and worming medication order last time. I tried to understand what had gone wrong but couldn't understand half of what she was saying since she was going off while yelling at me and being extremely rude. At first glance, it seemed like a minor and honest mistake, which I was trying to understand and clarify. She wanted none of it. She was demanding an explanation, and I apologized for the mistake and told her that unfortunately, due to COVID, we were extremely understaffed, which was absolutely true. And while I didn't justify it, it would at least explain why there was a mistake in her order. This entitled Karen then tried to ask why it is we were unable to understand such simple orders, implying that COVID had also affected our brains. And then she went off again. I was speechless when I got off the phone. One of my colleagues saw the name on the screen and proceeded to tell me that she was the rudest client she had ever met. Well, I told her that she was coming in later the afternoon, and we were all really not looking forward to it. The moment she walked into the clinic, I knew it was her. She was a middle-aged woman with the cutest dog you could ever see, whom no one could touch because he would absolutely bite you. It was one of those cages where the dog's behavior unsurprisingly takes after the owners. Because I knew a mega Karen was coming, I had mentally prepared and pulled out all of my options and was impossibly nice to her. I was super attentive and made her feel so welcome. She always seemed to be on the edge of evolving into a mega Karen at the slightest touch, but I managed to play the cards right and maintain her right of the balance. That was until she had her appointment and came out of the room. She came to my desk to pay for the con and just like before, out of nowhere, started screaming at me for no reason, saying that we were just stealing money from her and that the last time we had charged her extra money and that she wanted her money back. She basically just went off and was completely unhinged. I gathered all my patience, remained extra calm and pulled out her bill history and told her that we would check it together to see if there was any mistake and if so, I would be happy to correct it. Before doing it, I needed to check something with the vet, so I went into the consult room for about 10 seconds. When I came back, I found her all over my desk, on the computer, trying to read the screen over her glasses, and using the mouse and keyboard. I immediately snapped out of my happy customer service mode, and I thought to myself, are you kidding me? And I asked her way more politely than I probably should have, to move away, and that she couldn't do that. At this point, we had one more person at the reception desk, who was waiting for her dog to come out of surgery, and was sunk on her chair, just filming the entire interaction. In the end, she stepped away and I managed to never have to raise my voice. I went with her through her previous bills and managed to prove to her that nothing was wrong in the first place and that we never charged her extra for anything. Her attitude completely changed. She suddenly became very nice and compliant. Suddenly, she was all smiles and giggles as if it had never happened and she became very easy to work with. She called a taxi to take herself and her stupid little dog home and when she was outside and boarding the taxi, I came to the door, waved at her, and said with the biggest smile on my face, ma'am, you forgot to pay. And at this point, she laughed and so did I. Live, laugh, love, am I right? I took the card machine outside and she paid for the consult. When I entered the consult again, the client who was filming earlier turned to me and said, that was the most stellar customer service I have ever seen. I have worked retail and I would never have had that kind of patience that you just did. And we ended up laughing about the whole thing. It made me grateful that at least after the whole ordeal, someone was appreciative of my work, which is a big treat if you work with the public. What an absolute psychopath. The fact that this lady acts like this in public is super cringeworthy. I mean, you have to really be completely detached from society to cause this much of a fuss over something so simple. Like, is it really that big enough of a deal where you have to cause such a big uproar and invade this lady's personal professional space just to try and make a point about something that you're clearly wrong about? I mean, that's just unacceptable in my opinion. So hopefully this entitled Karen learns her lesson and treats people with more respect than this. Because in my opinion, the way you treat retail workers or customer service employees truly is a reflection of what kind of person you really are. And based on the way she acted, she is clearly not a very good person. Thanks for watching. When you
when you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, use the playlist at the top of the description. And the next time you live stream, use the Cream of the Crop music. Search Cream of the Stream on Spotify or whatever platform you use for copyright-free music to use for your next stream.